Hi, everyone, and welcome to part seven in this series of securing fields in ServiceNow. In this video, we are going to take a look at column level encryption. Column level encryption is server side encryption for string based fields such as strings, dates, URLs, as well as for attachments. The field values that are encrypted can only be accessed by users who have the necessary roles. And users without the necessary roles actually don't see the field at all. I'm only going to give you an introduction to this topic here. This is actually quite a complex and big topic. And there are three individual courses on column level encryption available on Now Learning that I strongly recommend that you take if you want to know more about this and learn how to implement it. These three courses are actually part of a broader learning path on the ServiceNow Vault that goes a little bit deeper into other encryption and data privacy topics. So the best thing to do is to get started with an example and let's learn together how we can set this up and test column level encryption. All right, for this example, we're going to continue using the same table we've been using in previous videos in this series, this cars table here, which contains some vehicle data. And in past videos, we've been looking at ways in which we can secure this pin field right here. So at the moment, I'm logged in as the cars admin and I can see the field and I've got right access as well. And the same is also true for our cars user here as well. I've got read and write access to this pin field. Okay, so let's come back. And our starting point is the field encryption module. So this is something we need to create. This is the framework for all the encryption that we are going to create here. So I'll just go ahead and create a new record. And we'll call this uh, car pin codes. Okay, uh, no spaces are allowed in this name. So that's why I've got the underscores there. And I'll go ahead and select the default template for the uh, cryptograph cryptography specification. <laughs> All right, so I will save that. And once I do that, I get this entry here in this crypto specifications related list. This is actually uh, the key that we're going to define uh, various parameters for. So let's go ahead and open that. Here basically just have to walk through this little guided setup of sorts uh, to define the key. So uh, I'm going to stick with the default algorithm here and click on next. Optionally, we don't have to do this uh, to specify a, a lifecycle uh, for the key that we're going to create. Uh, so what we could do here is set uh, the duration here to be one and the duration type uh, to be one year and one year from or after And here, for some reason, we can't actually specify the activation date of the key. Um, so let's go into the record itself. And we want the relative duration of one year after the activation date and just update it there. OK, so that's looking good. All right. So let's go to the next step. Again, I'm just going to accept all the default values here. For the key origin uh, service now uh, if you have the enterprise version you can actually supply your own keys but again this is something that we're not going to go into in this course this is something that is discussed in a little bit of detail in the courses on now learning so next all right so now we're done with our little setup wizard here and we'll go ahead and generate the key Okay, so now we're back to the cryptographic module here. And you can see here, we now have one key uh, that's been generated. Okay, it's not active yet. Uh, this cryptographic module lifecycle state is set to draft at the moment, uh, but we can change that to published and update that. You can see also now that the key lifecycle state has been automatically set to active. OK, so the next thing we have to do is to come to our module access policies right here. 
And basically, we need to assign a role to that uh, cryptographic module that we've just created. So let's go ahead and create a new one. We'll give it a name. Uh, car pins for admins. Okay, or for car admins. Okay, uh, we'll select that uh, cryptographic module. Again, pin codes is the one. Here we will select a uh, role and the target role will be our cars admin user. And we will set the result to track. Okay, and then save that. Okay, so this means now that if you have the cars admin role, you've got access to that key to that cryptographic module that we've just created. The next step now is to define the field that we want to actually encrypt. So let's go to field encryption, encrypted field configurations. And we'll go ahead and create a new one. All right, so we are going to encrypt a column. In this case here, uh, the table will be our cars table and the column will be the pin field. Okay. Uh, importantly, the cryptographic module, we need to specify that as well. So let's do that one, the pin codes one. And then we are ready to go. Now we're going to restrict this to a single module, but you can actually specify more than one uh, module here. If you save this, there will be a related list that appears. Uh, that basically gives you the opportunity to encrypt, just put that back in there, uh, encrypt uh, a field with two different keys for two different roles. So if I um, write to that field with my key, with my role, um, only users with that role will be able to see that value. If you still have right access to that encrypted field, but with a different encryption key, you won't be able to see it, but you will be able to see any changes or entries that were made with your own encryption key, okay? Mm -hmm. So again, this is something that we'll go, uh, that we go into a little bit more in the Now Learning courses. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. Okay, so we can now go ahead and test this. Uh, I don't think we need to click on this schedule mass encryption job link. I read somewhere that uh, once you set this up, it will imply to future records and changes, but not to current records. But in my testing, uh, that wasn't the case. But we can check this now. If I go back to my uh, admin user still and look at this table, if I just refresh this list here, we should still be able to see the pin and all the values there. If I open up a form, uh, we can see the pin field there. You can see the little padlock. Actually, that means it's encrypted now. And uh, I can go ahead and change that value uh, to something else and save it. And I should not have a problem with that because I have the cars admin role. Let's see what it's like now for the cars user. So if I come back to the list and we'll just refresh this, first of all, we've got the pin at the moment. I haven't refreshed the page since. So let's do that now. Okay, so the pin field is still there. Okay. Um, ideally, we probably should get rid of it from the list layout, but it's still there. But you can see all the values have gone. If I double click in there, nothing happens. Okay, if I open up a record, however, then we should not see that pin field at all it's gone all right and if i were to look at the source code for this page you yeah, know that pin field uh won't be there all right so for the cars user that field's encrypted it's for all intents and purposes i don't even know that that field exists apart from the fact that i saw it in the list layout and uh yeah so we should actually take care of removing that field um so it's not to make users lives more uh, complicated Okay, so that's how you set up column level encryption uh, quite easily and quickly in ServiceNow. Um, as I said, we started by creating a uh, cryptographic module, which then was associated with a key. We then uh, associated that key with, uh, or that module with a particular user or role, and then also to a particular field, and then all those come together to encrypt the field for specific, or well, encrypt the field, but 
make it available for specific users only. Okay, so this has been a very short summary of how to set up column level encryption. Again, I would strongly recommend all of you who are interested in learning more about this feature, who need to implement it, need to plan it and then implement it, uh, to take a look at those courses on now learning because those courses go into much more detail than what we've been able to cover here in this short video. Okay, you'll need also to plan your encryption because encrypting a field means that that's going to have an impact potentially on other processes, either in terms of users or background processes, flows, scripts, etc., that are relying on access to that field. So you need to ensure that the processes that you've previously configured in the past are going to continue to work after you encrypt a field. Just a couple of notes on my own testing with flows and business rules. Uh, when I created a flow to see if it had access to that data in that field, if I ran that flow as a system user, it failed. But if I set the flow to run as the currently logged in user and that user had the necessary role to view that field, that encrypted field, then it worked uh, just fine. Uh, with business rules, uh, it's similar. If the business rule has been triggered by a user who has the necessary role to view that field, then that should work just fine. Um, maybe as a best practice, you could use the uh, Glide system method uh, has role to check if the user does have the necessary roles before you do anything else with that business rule. But these are just a couple of very brief points to consider. And there are other points that you'll need to look at. And as I said, uh, con level encryption is something that needs to be planned properly, thought about, uh, looking at the consequences of doing that for reporting as well, uh, and so forth. But I hope this has helped you uh, in understanding column level encryption and securing your data in ServiceNow. Thank you for watching this video. And maybe even if you have watched the whole series, thank you very much. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.